Andrea from andreatilly.com and I'm so happy that I'm back with you. I've been gone forever. I haven't made a video in ages and um, so I'm back and I just wanted to make a quick video to kind of say hi. It's Sunday and I'm not on call but I went in to see a patient so that's why I'm in scrubs um, and I kind of wanted to just update you guys about everything that's been going on. So uh, as some of you know, I think I made a quick video about this uh, the last time that I posted on YouTube, I've been studying for my big ophthalmology exam. And so once a year, the ophthalmology residents take an exam called OCAPS, which is the Ophthalmic Knowledge and Assessment. I don't even know what it stands for. That's probably bad. Uh, but anyways, it's this big exam that we take every year. And um, sometimes those scores can be used for fellowship applications which would be a subspecialization that you would go into after residency. And so since I don't know exactly what I want to do in terms of fellowship and I want to keep my options open and be competitive, I really tried to study as much as I could for that exam. And so really I've been kind of off of social media and haven't been blogging or YouTubing at all for the last couple months because I've really been focused on OCAPS. And so yesterday was our test. It was 250 questions. They gave us five hours to take it. Uh, we all finished, all the residents took it, and we all finished um, in a, about four hours, a little over four hours. And then it was over, and we all went out and celebrated after. We went out to dinner with the whole program, which was really nice. And so now that it's over, we can finally kind of take a break from studying so much and just focus on, you know, being good residents and learning from our patients and not having to kind of focus on that book knowledge as much until next year rolls around and then we take it again next year. So you take the same exam every year. And so um, that's kind of been what's going on with me. I really have not been doing much besides just going to work and being a resident and then studying in all of my free time and then just trying to take care of myself and sleep as much as I can. Sleep is such a huge stress reliever for me, so I try to sleep a lot. Um, and trying to eat healthy, I honestly have not been working out very much at all, and so I'm excited to kind of get back in the gym, and I'm dreading it because I'm going to be so out of shape, and I'm going to be so sore, but I'm also excited about getting kind of a new workout routine, and, um, you know, spending more time in the gym since I've been spending so much time at coffee shops and here at my desk studying and really not doing anything, um, physical for, huh, a long time. I mean, I still had like a couple workouts a week, but really not much. So that's going to be exciting and new. Um, and otherwise, residency is going great. And I'm also really looking forward to kind of focusing more on YouTube and making new videos for you guys. I hear all of your requests and I know you guys want to hear from surgeons. And so I'm working on a neurosurgeon, general surgeon, orthopedic surgeon, cardiovascular surgeon. Um, I think those are the big ones that you guys want to hear from. I'm working on OBGYN. I'm working on psychiatry, pathology. Um, those are some of your most requested fields. And so um, stay tuned for more interviews with different subspecialties and send me your requests and let me know what you want to hear from. And then also I just want to apologize because you guys are amazing and you reach out to me in email and messages on Instagram and messages on YouTube, which I didn't even know that messages on YouTube were a thing until like a week ago I randomly found this little message tab and I have all these messages from you guys and I have no idea that even existed. So if you've been messaging me on Instagram or emailing me and I haven't responded, I'm really sorry. Um, I just have kind of put that on the back burner. But um, it, it's just so hard for me to respond to all of you. And so if I haven't responded, you can always try to email me again. Email is probably the easiest way um, to get in touch with me if you really want to. Or um, if you comment on Instagram then I can comment back to you no problem. I don't always get to my Instagram messages. That's just like a bottomless pit of messages and some, and I get really behind on those. So that's not the best way. So if I've been ignoring you, I'm so sorry. And um, just if 
if you have like this burning question, comment on YouTube and I'll try to get back to you or send me an email. And then if you really want to chat, there's always the option to Skype with me, which you can find on my blog, andreatulicom slash contact or under the contact section. You can find out more information about how to Skype if you really want to chat and I haven't been responding to your messages. I'm so sorry, but I appreciate you guys so much, and I love this little community that we have here, and so I hope that I'll be able to interact with you more now that I'm not studying as much. So, um, kind of, yeah, putting all that aside, and those are my big updates and things that I wanted to tell you, um, a lot of people asked how I studied for OCAPS, which was my big board exam, and so um, I figured that since it's over, I can tell you what I did and tell you how I studied. Now, mind you, I don't have my score back yet, so I, um, I don't, I, I'm always kind of like reluctant to preach about my study technique if, unless I've done really well, um, and so, yeah, so I'm going to say how I studied, but take this with a grain of salt because I could have done terribly, I don't know. I think I did okay, but uh, again, I don't know, um, and then this would just be for ophthalmology residents to know what I did, but, um, but if you're out there studying and you're in high school or you're in undergrad or you're in medical school, um, this is just kind of how I studied for this big exam. So OCAPS um, is the, our, our ophthalmology board exam, and it's based on our um, series of books called the BCSC, which is the um, Basic and Clinical Science course. So this is one of the books. Um, and so there are 13 books in the series, and our test is over um, anything that appears within these 13 books. And so anything in the books is fair game, um, and basically you, you just need to read and be responsible uh, for these 13 books and all the information within them. So yeah, this was the this is the pediatric one. Um, this is, there's a retina one. So there's one in every subject. So this is the retina book. Um, this is the cornea book, and they're really great. I, um, some of them, they're really dense, but they have, like, nice pictures, and they have lots of, like, charts, and uh, that's an eyeball, and, um, there's another eyeball. Ooh, see all those defects in the iris? Very cool. Anyways, um, so th this is all the information that we're tested on, these 13. So this is only three of the books, and so it's, like, a ton of information, and, uh, so... Basically, studying is just based out of reading these, but then I also used a review book. I used this one. Um, this is the Friedman. There's another really good review book by Churn that people seem to like a lot, but I used Friedman. And this is more kind of like first aid for step one. It's all very like bulleted, and um, I kind of like annotated it and put my own notes in there and um, like wrote down my own things. And so this is another review book that I used. And then there's also a question bank online called Opto Questions, and I use that. I think there's 3,000 questions. I didn't get through all of them, but I got through a lot of them. And I really like to learn by questions, and so I tried to do as many of those as I possibly could. So that's one thing I did. And then basically I tried to study every morning um, because the mornings work well for me, and that's... Um, just something you have to know about yourself. If you're a night person, study at night. If you're a morning person, study in the morning. And so I would study in the morning. And I made a lot of my little question sheets. So what I did was um, I made all of my, I, in my how to study videos, I talk about how I do this. But I write, I take notes in kind of a question answer format. And I fold my paper like this. And I write questions on one side and I write answers on the other. And um, sometimes I, most of the time I do it like this, but sometimes as I'm looking over here, I just write, I just take regular notes as well. And so I did this on a lot of the chapters from those books that I showed you, but then also from my review book, I just took notes and I made these little sheets and then I separated them into categories um, based on whatever topic they were. So then I used these little cl plastic paper separators to keep them all organized. So these are all my notes about pathology. And so I put them all in this binder. So 
if we look at this binder, I have like, whoops, those are all the studies over here we have to know. Um, I have a neuro ophthalmology one. Oh my gosh, this is gonna, this is not gonna work. There we go. Um, cornea. These are just notes on the question bank that I use online, opto questions. Pathology. Optics. Glaucoma. Retina. Plastics. And this is peds. And so this is how this is just how much loose paper I took notes on, which is really kind of a lot. Um, just notes. And then I could decide like today I want to study plastics. So I would like go in here and grab my little plastics folder and then I'd have all the notes that I took on plastics. And so that was really helpful for me just keeping it organized. And I think that next year, it's going to be great because I can just go back to this binder and start reviewing. And I've already taken notes in these question and answer format and I can just read through all of this and it'll be a great review. And I think that's very similar to people who make flashcards and then you have flashcards forever. So one of my classmates made flashcards and he has literally a stack of flashcards that's like four feet tall. And so every year he can go back to his flashcards and use those. And so I think the point is that it's whatever works for you and whatever way you want to do it. Um, but you just have to focus on getting through the material, which is really challenging. So I found that studying for this test was super, super challenging. Um, one of the hardest the hardest tests that I've ever studied for. And I think that's for a couple reasons. One is that ophthalmology is a really difficult subject matter. It's You don't learn it in medical school, and so everything you learn in residency is brand new. And you have, and in medical school, you're learning all this new information, but you have nothing to do all day. So you're just studying all day, learning information. But in ophthalmology, you also have to work all day and see patients. And so you're working 12 hours a day, and you're learning a lot on the job. Um, but then you have to try to learn all this book knowledge in addition to working 10, 12, 14 hours a day, which is really hard. And there's a lot of stuff in the books that they test you on that you never see in clinic. I think a lot of you know from taking these standardized tests that they ask you about the most rare, ridiculous diseases that you will never see. Um, and those are the ones that are most frequently tested. And so you have to learn about all this stuff separately. And even though you learn about a ton of stuff in clinic by seeing patients, um, there's still a lot of material that you're responsible for that you just have to learn from the books. And so it was really hard to find the time to study. And then for me, um, ophthalmology is really hard to conceptualize. Um, the eye is so small and the physiology of what goes on in the eye is really hard to understand until you've seen it in a patient and even I'm there's stuff now that I'm just getting that I'm just like oh I finally understand like what's going on inside someone's eyeball when this is when this is happening and so I think that even if I'd started studying this stuff like a year ago I don't know how much I would have really understood and how much it would have helped me so Going through this material, I didn't start hardcore studying until January. Um, and then when the test got closer, like at the beginning of March, I really wished I would have started studying harder earlier because I felt like there was just too much information and too much material and I kind of felt like too little too late. Like I just don't have time to go through all of it and I'm never going to I'm never going to learn it all. Um, so I wish I would have started studying earlier, but then part of me thinks that even if I had started studying earlier, I don't know how much I would have gotten out of it because back in July when I was brand new, I wouldn't have understood what I was reading. And it's just now that I'm finally starting to kind of grasp what it all means. And so, it, yeah, this was just really hard. This was a really hard test. And I think that all first years in ophthalmology feel this way. I'm sure I'm not alone. Some people do amazing, and I don't know who those people are. I hope that I did above average was kind of just my goal. Um, but then I think of average, the people I'm competing against are all ophthalmology residents. So they're all like these amazing, brilliant, super competitive, awesome people who are incredible. So to even be better than half of them is like awesome. Um, that's kind of how I think about it. So I, I just hope that I did okay, but that's what I've been doing. 
and uh, that's how I studied, and um, now I'm just looking forward to kind of getting back to life, and I'm still going to keep studying, um, even though the test is over, and I have two great rotations coming up. In April, I'm on retina, and I'm looking forward to learning a lot more about the retina and kind of understanding those things that I was memorizing for the test. And then finally seeing them in practice and seeing them in patients and being able to, like, make those connections. And I felt that way in medical school, too. You know, you learn all these things first and second year in medical school. And then when you finally get to see it in a patient, third and fourth year, it all comes full circle. And you really have it such a deeper understanding. And um, it, makes it, it makes it great and really worthwhile. So I'm looking forward to retina in April. And then in May and June, I'm on my cornea rotation and we get a lot of surgery during those rotations and so I'm super excited about getting to do more procedures you know one of the reasons that I went into ophthalmology is because I want to be a surgeon I want to do surgery that's where I'm happiest is in the OR and so I can't wait for a more surgical subspecialty and um, yeah then after May and June it'll be July 1st and I'll be a second year and so I'll be in the second year of my residency, and we'll get new first years coming in. And I can't believe that was me a year ago. And it's just super exciting. It's it's really great. Residency is really challenging, and you learn a lot. And it really um, kind of, like, beats you down and builds you up. And it's exhausting. Um, and it's so different than medical school and so different than intern year. But I'm learning a ton, and I love – I love the high parts, you know, seeing patients get better and um, seeing patients trust you and listen to you as a as their doctor is really incredible and it's such a just it's such a joy. So everything is good and I'm glad to touch base with you guys. Let me know what you're up to. You know, it's getting towards spring break and finals and like the end of the semester or mid semester. So let me know what you're up to and um, look forward to more videos and more blogs and I'll be around more. All right. So thanks so much for watching. Talk to y'all later. Bye.